I have a new PCB to put together. Let's check it out. This one is a Teensy 3.6 audio and LED matrix breakout board. So I can put a Teensy 3.6 right here on headers. I can also put the audio shield right here beside it if I want to use this for audio in and out. And I also have circuitry provisions here so I can use an analog to digital input, a DAC output, or a PWM output. So I can do various things with audio. I'm not tied to projects with just this shield. And there's a header here for an RGB matrix panel. So I can take this 64 by 64 panel, plug in the data, give it 5 volts from a higher current source elsewhere. Then I can get this panel up and running using Teensy, and I no longer have to fumble around with a breadboard like this plugging into the panel or using a breadboard for all these discrete components for audio in and out if I don't happen to want to use this digital interface. The board looks like it came out nice. Let's go put it together, and in the meantime, take a look at the design. Today's project video is sponsored by PCBWay. 10 PCBs for $5 plus shipping. And if your design has special requirements, you can take a look at the advanced PCB capabilities offered by PCBWay including what manufacturing tolerances they can achieve and what materials they can offer to help you achieve your design goals. Take a look at what they have to offer at PCBWay.com. The LED panel portion of this project is based on the Pixelmatix Smart Matrix Library and Hardware Shield, and it has all the instructions here for installing it. Looking in the hardware section, there's a Smart LED Shield version 4, and what this shield does, it takes the Teensy and some of the GPIO go to control the LED panel with a 16-pin header. The signals are first buffered, and that also acts as a level shifter from 3.3 volts to 5 volts. And these signals are essentially shift registers for the red, green, and blue serial data going out to the panel. So the Smart Matrix library is set up to use these pins on Teensy to control the panel. Looking at the schematic, there's three basic sections to this. First we have header pins to accept the Teensy 3.6 and optionally the Teensy Audio Shield. There's extra headers for all the pins on the Teensy in case I want to hook up something else. And if I don't want to use the Audio Shield, the second section of this design is optional analog to digital inputs for left and right audio in, along with DAC stereo outputs and a PWM single channel audio out. And I've tested all of these audio options in a previous video I'll link to. I'm not gonna do an in-depth analysis. I'm just gonna test the board's functionality by using an MP3 player to test all the ins and see that I can get audio out. And the third section over here is to control the RGB LED panel. And this is based on the Smart Matrix hardware shield. First, for power, we need to provide exactly 5 volts. I don't have a power supply circuit on here. So I can either use screw terminals or headers to give 5 volts, and then we have a diode here, or I can power it from 5 volts USB when Teensy is plugged in. But if I'm going to do that, I'm going to need to follow this info for using Teensy power and external power. Teensy doesn't come with a diode on the 5 volt supply, so we need to add our own and then we can safely power from external 5 volts through a diode or Teensy with a diode added. And I'm using a single supply for the op amps, so I need to provide a V-ref halfway up between 0 and 5 volts with a voltage divider. And this analog to digital converter voltage reference connects up here in the ADC audio input path and biases the audio halfway between 0 and 1.2 volts, which is the range for the ADC input. This circuit, including that analog reference, is a recommended circuit from the Teensy Audio Library GUI. When you want to use ADC inputs, they recommend this. And before that, because this is a passive network and we don't know what we're going to be plugging in here, I wanted an op amp circuit just to act as a buffer if nothing else. I can optionally control the gain right there, or the level here. And if I want to filter out any higher frequencies, I have an option of adding a capacitor in the feedback loop. If I want to use the DAC, I can do two channels of audio out without the Teensy audio shield. 
the same generic buffer circuit here just to provide some isolation, and there's nothing else special going on here. And I can also do one channel of PWM audio out. This circuit here comes from the Teensy recommendations as well. So there's two channels that are combined with this circuit for one channel of audio. I'm doing that right here and then buffering with the op amp to the output. And this LED panel circuit is very similar to the Smart Matrix Shield, but for my level shifter, instead of using a 7400 series logic chip, I'm using one of these logic level shifter modules because I have a bunch of these in stock and they will allow me to go between 3.3 and 5 volts. There's eight channels on these modules, but I needed another one, so I built a discrete copy of one of these channels. I did test this circuit before committing it to the PCB design, so it works, but these level shifters aren't as fast as a 7400 logic chip. So if I want to do this design again in the future, I may upgrade this. I'm using the same latch circuit as the Smart Matrix Shield. Although I don't have any in stock, they are on order. And this actually shouldn't say LS. It's supposed to be AHCT 7400 logic because it's fast. Since it's basically eight D flip-flops with a data in and a Q out and then a latch control. I'm going to use a bunch of 7474 chips to get five channels of data and I'm going to temporarily bridge some wires over to a breadboard and test the board's functionality that way. Then when I get these chips in I'll just add it to a socket. And the LED panel plugs in here. In order to test the audio in and out for all of the options on this board, I'm taking left and right audio from every possible input. I have a left channel mixer, a right channel mixer, and then I send all the lefts out and all the rights out. So I'll plug an MP3 player into whatever input I'm testing. I'll take these outputs, run them through a separate amplifier, and make sure I can hear it. So once I set up this architecture, I would export. It just generates this little header to get started with connecting up inputs to outputs. And you copy that over to an Arduino sketch. That goes in here. For the mixers, the left and right, we set the gains to what we want. We have to enable the audio shield in case it's populated and in use. All we've done is wire up inputs to outputs so the main loop doesn't even have anything. We just need the sketch to run and it will act as an audio pass-through shield. Here's the setup. We have an MP3 player and one of these four conductor plugs. Then I have DuPont jumpers that I can move around. So here's the audio shield with line in and out. Here's stereo ADC inputs and stereo DAC outputs. And that goes to this amplifier. It's not the best amplifier for this. And there's a mono PWM output right here, but I'm just not even going to test this. It's the lowest quality out of all these options, so we'll ignore it. So let's test the other DAC ADC and audio board line in and out. When the Smart Matrix library is installed in Arduino, it comes with a bunch of example sketches. I'm going to use this multiple text layers one as well as Spectrum Analyzer. The multiple text layers just has five text messages that scroll along in different directions. So the only changes I'll be making when I use this, I need to change the width and height right here. And I also have to change the panel type so that it's a 64 row mod 32 scan. That one works for me. Then I just compile and upload. The spectrum analyzer, it takes a single channel of audio on analog 2. So I would have to put audio in through this input here, out through here onto the panel. I'll get a spectrum analyzer display. I have the panel hooked up to this ATX computer power supply for 5 volts plugged in on the back, and the ribbon cable for the data in is going to the PCB. And it's running a scrolling text multiple layer demo sketch that comes with Smart Matrix. At first the display wasn't working. It was all red on the bottom half, and I knew it was supposed to look like this. It turns out it was actually the individual FET level shifter 
located under this teensy. So I had the oscilloscope involved. I was looking at all the signals. And when I fixed that one line, it went back to normal. And since I don't have this latch IC, I've got 30 gauge wire soldered to the pins on the bottom of the board coming out to this breadboard with three 7474 flip-flops. That way they can act as a latch and control the display properly until I get the chip. Let's try using both the display and the audio portion of this board. And here's the spectrum analyzer sketch from Smart Matrix. It takes audio from an analog input, so the MP3 player goes to the analog input and the display shows what's going on. This is certainly a lot easier and cleaner than all those wires on the breadboard and having to hook things up from scratch every time. So now I can do a lot more Teensy audio and LED panel experiments. Thanks to PCB Way for sponsoring this project. If you'd like to see further projects using this hardware, don't forget to subscribe so you can be notified. Thanks for watching.